Hello again and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Sharon and I'm going to talk you through a design using wire mesh instead of floral foam. So today's video uses wire mesh which is a more environmentally friendly option to the green floral foam. Green floral foam is a single use plastic and lots of florists and flower arrangers are trying to find new or reinvented ways of creating beautiful floral designs. So you'll find lots of videos on the channel already where I've used wire mesh or what we often refer to as chicken wire. And today I'm going to recreate the design that we would have looked at a month or so ago. I used floral foam for that design. It was the design where I used beautiful proteas and some fabulous arum lilies. I've got exactly the same flower content today. I'm going to reuse exactly the same flowers and I'm going to create a slightly different shape arrangement because I've already cut those flowers to a certain length so I obviously can't make them longer but I wanted this, you to see how you can use the same container and the same flowers to create a different style of arranging. Okay so I've got this lovely big metal sort of tripod stand. This one has come from the range which is a shop here in the UK. I'm going to place an upturned plastic dish in the bottom just to raise up my container and I'm going to arrange into the same size plastic dish as I did before. But instead of having floral foam, I've now got the wire mesh. I've created three sort of layers so that I've got plenty of support for my stems. So think a little bit in advance. If your flowers are small, thin and narrow, you might want to squash your wire mesh together. I've got quite big thick stems, so I need to have a good inch hole in my wire mesh and this is from Wilkinson so again if you're here in the UK Wilco's is a high street store that sells lots of household and garden material and the reason I like this one is because it's plastic coated so I can wash it and reuse it in time and time again and it's quite kind to the flower stems so when you insert them into the wire mesh you don't cut or damage your stems in any way. The reason that I've put it in another plastic container is because this is a design that I often do for weddings and it means that the bridal party can lift out the container, take it home with them and appreciate them at home and it leaves me with my original base. The other reason for it today is because my stems have been previously cut for a previous video, I don't have the length to get right to the bottom of my container. So if I had longer flowers and longer stems, I wouldn't need this middle section. I would just place the wire mesh into the main part of my container. And remember, if you're using anything that's metal like this, some of the metal can react with flower food and cause problems to your flowers. It could also leak from the base where the leg or any decorative features have been added. So just check beforehand that your container is fully waterproof. And under normal circumstances, that would be filled with water. But because I'm tilting it forward and chatting to you about it, I'm going to add the water right at the very end. Right, okay, let's get started. I started the previous video by using all of the aspidistra leaves. And I have cut all these in one go so that you don't have to sort of keep watching me cutting each stem. So I'll, I'll start by creating a similar design to the one I did previously um, and we'll see how it goes. I don't think I'm probably going to get it quite as tall but we're going to work our way around creating that frill of foliage towards the front and then I'm going to bring up some of the leaves in a slightly higher position. I am radiating them out from the centre point um, and the wire mesh in the centre is holding them really nicely in position. At the back of the arrangement last time, I rolled a few of the leaves, so I created this manipulated shape. And what's going to happen this time is the leaf is going to stand up in the air because I don't have the height of the floral foam to be able to place that in. So it's not as elegant as the arrangement I did before and I probably won't use any more rolled leaves I'll just keep them in their full form. 
Now please remember I am cutting all these stems in one go because it's probably a bit painful for you to watch just seeing me cut one at a time. Then I introduced some red and when I originally did it I felt that I didn't have enough of the red colour in at the front. So what I now need to consider is to try and get the red cordyline leaves to angle forward over my container. I don't have the option of placing them in at the foam so that they are at 45 degree angle. I've now got to allow the shape of the foliage and the length of the foliage to sort of speak for itself. The important factor in this design is that you get the stems right the way down into what would be the water source. It's no good just resting them on the top of the chicken wire and not having them deep enough so that they can drink the water. Just a few more of those. And this time I'm going to start with my biggest flower. So it was these large protea. And I have cut all of these just in one go using the secateurs because they're quite a thick stem. Now I don't have any option to make this design any taller but what I'm going to do is start low and then almost make tiers, make sort of levels of the flower so they sit on top of one another to create hopefully a gorgeous design. I'm aiming to get it fairly round because that's what I did originally but we'll see how it goes and we'll see how it develops. But the protea there are sitting quite comfortably in the wire mesh. I made sure I didn't hold, squash it down too tight and I've got a lovely shape starting to form straight away. Right, now what we're gonna go with next? I think we'll go with the arum lilies. What I'm thinking of is the thick stems first. So I get the thick stems into position when there is plenty of room around the wire mesh and then I can feed the thinner stems in later on. So nice clean cut on the base of these. Um, as the wire mesh fills up you need to sort of concentrate on where the flowers are going. This is one of the shorter stems, this needs to be at the base somewhere. And one of the benefits I think of arranging, not only is it far more environmentally friendly, but you also have the option to place flowers in and lift them out, place them, you know, move them around without any holes forming in the foam. And I can reuse the wire mesh, just clean it and make sure it's been sterilized and I can use it at a later date. Right, so I know that at the moment those two might look like they're standing out there like a pair of sore thumbs, but as I progress, they'll become a far more integral part of the container. Right, now I'm going to go with the gladioli, and again, it's a thick stem, so I'm going to get these in quite soon. And these are going to be the tallest of my flowers. We'll give that a nice clean cut on the bottom. And I'm going to aim to place these in in the centre. Now if you're a bit concerned about the placement of the original flowers and you now think they're not in the right place, then it's really easy to just lift them out and reposition them where you think they're going to look better. And you don't have the worry about large holes appearing in your foam. Okay, now a lot of the questions I get asked with this type of design is carrying it or transporting it to the venue or um, how to sort of educate people at your local church or your religious building on how you can make arrangements not using floral foam and they're really easy to maintain so once they've been made and they're in position you just need to add a jug of water every now and again to ensure that there's plenty of water there for your cut flowers you can add flower foods in there as well and they do last, some flowers will last a lot longer in the fresh clean water than they will in the floral foam. So that's come together really nicely. We've got height, we've got width and if we look at it from front to back 
we've got depth as well. So I've got, I'm at no risk of that design falling over. It's stable and it's going to sit nicely with its back against the wall. It could be fabulous on an altar. Um, could be great in an entrance hallway as well. And one of the flowers that I used was the Leucodendra and this is Safari, it's not Safari Sunset, this is Gold Strike. Uh, for some reason I've only got four. I started with five so I might have dropped one on the floor. And they were originally the same length. So I'll just give a nice clean fresh cut. Remember when you're arranging into water that you have to keep the bottom of the stem free of any debris or any thorns or any leaves because that's going to contaminate the water and it will prevent your design lasting for, the, for a good length of time. The water will become a bit smelly and it won't be very attractive for people viewing it. So I'm not going to cut these any shorter, I'm going to keep placing them in in the length that I used them in the previous design. I found the fourth one that had dropped on the floor. Now this is a little bit shorter, so I'm gonna aim this one more towards the front, but push it right the way to the bottom of my container. And we've got a really loose, quite a natural style there in, in the, I'm, I'm tending to call it an urn, although it's a tripod stand really. Just as beautifully arranged, it's probably a bit more formal than I would do in, chicken wire normally I would normally do a looser design but it works really well with my flower choice and of course I was restricted by the size of the flowers that I had. Now we have the fabulous feathery celosia. This is the taller one so that will aim towards the center and then I've got four pieces that are fairly similar in length. So again a nice clean cut I'm going to remove all of that foliage that was on the bottom to make sure it's lovely and clean going into my water and then I'm going to position these just really evenly spreading out the colour and the texture. So what's at the front I'm going to aim to get it towards the back, what's at the left I'm going to aim to have that colour and texture to the right as well. Isn't that lovely? I'm re I, I find arranging in the wire mesh quite therapeutic. It's very relaxing. The flowers speak for themselves. You can't force anything to stand in a position that it doesn't want to go. You have to let the flowers speak for themselves. And the beauty of course is that you can take the flowers out and move them around and alternate the shape if it's not working very well for you. Right now, the Leonotis, I love these, just wonderful. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Think about evenly spreading out the color and the texture. And when I did this originally in floral foam, and I'll link it here in the cards, just in case you haven't seen that tutorial, I explained that it's almost like flowers, um, they're almost like they're erupting out of the container. So if you think about a volcano that's erupting from its core, these flowers look like they're all spilling out of the container. There's no sort of formal placement. So I've just really tried to evenly distribute the colors, the different textures, and all the different colors of the flowers. Now at the moment, because there's no water in there, there's a good chance it's gonna tip forward because I haven't got anything to weight it down. But if you are ever creating a design like this for your local church or for your own home, you might want to add some flowers in at the back there just to give you a bit of weight. I'm going to use up the last of the larger leaves there towards the back and that will help the stability, helps create that depth that I talk about all the time. I'm going to bring a couple in over the sides because you can just see where my tape is holding the container. So, so one of the things you really do need to consider with this type of arrangement is the way that the flowers naturally move. So if you need something to cascade downwards, you have to purchase it or pick it so it's cascading downwards. Otherwise, you've just got to let the flowers speak for themselves. So what do we think of this one? Isn't that lovely? 
It's, really, it's a really fun way of arranging flowers and if you're new to flower arranging then try this style but don't try and create any of those geometric shapes that you often see in flower arranging. Just let the flowers speak for themselves and particularly if it's your first time flower arranging cut the stems to a fairly similar length, cut all your flowers to a fairly similar length, arrange them in the wire mesh and you'll get almost a domed all round shape. So it's quite a simple tip for arranging for your first time. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I love this colour combination. It's worked really well together. It even blends quite well with my top, which was not planned. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Share with your friends and family. Let lots of people know that there's an amazing channel on YouTube where you can learn flower arranging. Hit the notification bell if you want to be told of new videos when I upload them and if you want to join me on Facebook I have a private Facebook group called Sharon's Innovations Group. Don't send me a private request, look for Sharon's Innovations Group and I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.